Hi there, it's Ashley here with this week's episode of Stamp Crate Repeat for Your Next Stamp. Today I have a cute little Valentine project that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to be making these little lollipop treat holders or you could use cake pops or any type of little goodie that's on a stick. So I have this cute little lollipop holder here with this little panda bear on the front and a little heart. I have little heart paper there and I think it just looks so precious. It's such a cute way to give a little treat with a Valentine. So I'm going to share with you the products I used. I'll have them linked below. I used the Your Next Stamp Black Olive Ink and Wire Die Cut Snips. I also used the Doodle Bug Twine here. I just used some pink and red to tie the twine portion at the top. I used the new Your Next Stamp Berry Special Stamp Set and I used this adorable little panda there. And then there is also coordinating dies you can purchase separate so I used that die there. And this is the Your Next Stamp Lollipop cover die. And this is a die that I've had from Your Next Stamp for quite some time. It's an older release and I just love this one so much. I have gotten so much use out of it. It's such a cute way to, for any occasion to make a cute little lollipop cover. And then you can add in a little chocolate lollipop or sweet lollipops. They, you can buy really cute little cake pops at Starbucks. And if you pop that in there, it's just such a cute way to let someone know you're thinking of them on their birthday or for Valentine's Day. So let's get started and I'll show you how I made these cute little lollipop covers. So to start out with, I'm going to stamp out my little stamped image here. This one I just fell in love with holding the little heart and so I'm just going to do two of these so that the lollipops look similar. So I'm taking my red Copic markers and I'm going to just outline the outside of the little heart here. And I'm doing this with my darkest red color. Then I'm going to go in with my medium red color, which is going to be R29, and I'm just blending that out. And just be careful of the middle part there because I want to leave that white so it kind of has like a little doily effect. And so I just am now taking R14 and very carefully going around there. Then I'm going to do some pink for the other one and so I'm doing it the exact same way I shaded. This one is with RV17 and so I'm just blending that out with RV14 and then RV13 and again just being mindful of that little white spot that I want to keep and if you do go into it it's totally fine. You can use your colorless blender to fix it or use your white jelly pen. Then I'm taking RV17 and RV14 to do that same color tone inside of this heart so I get the red and pink on it. And then I'm going to go with my white jelly pen just to make sure and touch up all the spots where I might have gone into the middle there. Then for the other one I'm going to add the red inside of the heart. And then I'm just blending it the same way I did with the other side. And you don't have to leave that middle portion white. You could do it any color you want, but I just think it looks so cute, kind of like a little doily there. So I blended that part out, and now I can start with the little panda bear. So I'm going to use some black colors and some like darker gray colors. So I'm using C8 to do the darkest portion. And I actually looked on my phone on Google what a real panda looks like so I can try to mimic the actual shading that a panda would have. So they have the darkest around their eyes and then also on their ears. So... I'm going to be doing the same darker portion on the ears with C8 and C4 and trying to blend that out nice. And then I went into the middle tongue part back a little bit um, with RV13 just in case you wanted to know that color. And then for the inside of the ear I use C4 and C2. And I do fuss a little bit and go back and forth just to really blend out those grays and make them nice and dark. And then on an actual panda they have kind of from like halfway up like where their arms are it's black so I'm going to do that part black and then kind of like halfway down is black so the majority of them ended up being fairly black but I think it turned out really cute and then I do leave a little bit of his side there with white so I'm just blending that out and I do as I said go back in quite a bit just to keep giving it a nice blend And I'm just doing the tip to tip technique with my Copic markers because I want to get a darker shade in between C8 and C4. So I'm just touching my lightest marker to the darker marker and then it's allowing me to have a color which would probably be about like C6. And so that's just giving me a darker color to blend with. He just looks so cute. And then for the belly I used C4 and C2 and also on the bottom of his little foot there. So there are my little critters. I did take my white jelly pen just to add a few little accents here and there. And then I also took my black jelly pen for the eyes and nose. And then I wait for that to dry. And I did fuss a little bit more with the little body there. 
and then I just took my white jelly pen to do a few accents on the panda and then I go over top of the black part on the eye with a little bit of white. So now I'm ready to take my wire snips and cut apart the coordinating dies. So I'm just taking that coordinating die and some post-it note tape and I'm just going to adhere that down so I can run it through my die cutting machine. And as you can see, it cuts out so nicely like around the arms. So here's the little reveal of it. It cuts inside where the little arm and foot was. And then I'm gonna cut out the other one. Now I'm taking my lollipop die and I'm putting the pointy part down so that's kind of how you know what way to make the direction of it so that it shows your pattern the way you want because I want the hearts to be on the upside. There's little folding creases on it so I'm just creasing it at the fold and it will fold there and so it has the little spot in the top where the little um, lollipop stick can go in and then it also has a little spot to put through the twine so I'm just adhering this on here normally you'd want to add your little bit of lollipop or whatever little sweet you want in it first and then close it but just for this video I wanted to show it closed so you guys could see how it would look and I was going to use this really cute glittery ribbon and I actually changed my mind about it. It was really stiff and it had a hard time fitting it through the hole and the hole's actually quite big. I didn't want to wreck the paper so um, you can use ribbon. The other type of ribbon I had fit perfectly but I just ended up using some twine and I think that looked a lot better anyways <laughs> because it's not so bulky as that glittery ribbon that I was going to use. So I just took some red twine and pulled that through and again as I had mentioned you'd want to put your lollipop stick through but the reason that I did it after was just because I just put a stick through so you guys could see how it would look so my stick went through um, I could just pop it into the little hole. So see, I did it again so you guys can see. So I stuck the little lollipop in and then you can put the little twine through the hole and the twine actually goes around the lollipop so it really nicely secures it in there so it's not gonna move. And how stinking cute is that? I love making cake pops. So these get used a lot in my house. I've used this dye quite a few times. I've got a lot of use out of this one. So you can just add in, say your stick at that point and close it then and add on your little stamped image or whatever you want to have on the front there and then I'm just going to put the twine through again and tie it closed. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know someone had mentioned they'd like to see an older Your Next Stamp die or stamp set used with a newer your Next Stamp product. So I used this Your Next Stamp Lollipop die, which is one of my all-time favorites, and mixed it with this new release stamp set. So I hope you enjoyed. I will have everything linked in the description box below. Please make sure to head over to the Your Next Stamp YouTube channel and subscribe, and I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye now!